Well, I want to join Molly and Brewster in thanking you for coming to this launch. Uh, this is a day that we've been looking forward to uh, for about two years. Uh, the idea hatched about two years ago, but uh, it takes a lot of uh, effort uh, to uh, put an, uh, the infrastructure for an organization like this to, together. So it took a while for us to launch, but uh, here we are. So as we began thinking about what a launch might look like and uh, what we want to do, we sort of said, well, we should launch, but what are we going to do? Just say, we're here. Um, uh, join us. Uh, we thought, oh, actually, we should do something that uh, offers a constructive proposal or a series of proposals about uh, how, how the world would be a better place if Authors Alliance uh, could uh, join the debate about some of the issues of the day that affect authors. Uh, and so uh, in the spirit of uh, the, the next great copyright act, which uh, Maria Palante, the Register of Copyrights, announced that we should be trying to develop, uh, we thought, well, uh, that copyright reform issues are actually on the table now. Congress has held some hearings uh, about it. Uh, the Patent and Trademark Office and the Copyright Office are both doing a series of studies. And so we thought, this is a time when, in fact, uh, some conversation about copyright reform uh, seems to be happening. And gee, uh, our voices uh, as authors who want to be read uh, would be a good uh, thing to uh, contribute to the, the conversation. So I've been working on copyright reform issues pretty much my entire career, uh, but particularly the last seven years I've been uh, putting together uh, groups of people um, uh, to talk about copyright reform. and. Uh, the Copyright Principles Project uh, featured 20 uh, copyright professionals, including uh, practicing lawyers and lawyers representing some of the content industries that you will have heard of before. And we came up with a series of reform proposals that were worthy of consideration. And I'm really pleased to, uh, to say that not only were many of the proposals that uh, we made in our uh, Principles Project uh, report on the agenda that Maria Palante uh, announced, but also a number of the things that she announced are also part of the agenda uh, that uh, the Authors Alliance wants to uh, reinforce, although we have a few ideas uh, uh, on top of that. So one of the issues that Maria Palante has made uh, a high priority uh, is orphan works. Uh, and so one of the proposals that is part of our uh, reform agenda is free orphan works. And I thought there's, I thought a couple of examples would actually help to illustrate why that's actually an important thing. So you have here a picture, this is an orphan work. Uh, this is a picture of uh, James Foreman, uh, one of the leaders of the so uh, Southern Nonviolent Coordinating Committee uh, that was very active in the civil rights movement uh, in the 1960s uh, after, uh, uh, one of the civil disobedience and protests that was held in Alabama. He was arrested and put in jail. Uh, SNCC activists were able to sneak a camera into the jail uh, and uh, to persuade some prisoner, uh, fellow prisoner, to take this particular photograph. And then they were managed to get the, the, the camera back out of the, the prison so that they could print the photos from this uh, roll of film. And uh, to me, this is a very iconic um, uh, photograph. Uh, and uh, the archivists of the SNCC uh, documents uh, want to make this all this and many other documents uh, from SNCC archives uh, available on the internet, uh, and yet they recognized that there were some copyright issues that they needed to at least come to terms with and have some uh, ability to uh, think through, and so the, the law clinic at Berkeley uh, was able to work with them to try to develop some guidelines about which documents they really could put up and uh, how to do that. Um, but uh, this is an example of something that's, a, that's an orphan work. It's clearly in copyright, but you couldn't possibly track down the, the author. And yet, anyone who's writing a history of the civil rights movement or anyone who's trying to do a biography 
uh, a foreman would want to be able to use a photograph like this because it speaks so loudly to uh, both the determination and to the grit that it took to be uh, a civil rights leader in that, uh, in that time period. So this is a short video clip of a, a home movie that somebody took of the release of Japanese Americans who had been incarcerated in the Jerome, Arkansas War Relocation Center uh, during World War II. And uh, this was the time of the release, uh, this is about June of uh, 1944, uh, and it's a very moving segment um, of film about um, this release finally uh, of people who had been incarcerated. And uh, this is another orphan work. Um, again, anyone who's trying to write a history or make a documentary about these internments would want to be able to use clips of this sort. Uh, because it was made in 1944, uh, it actually is an orphan work uh, also. Uh, or it's in copyright and we don't know who, uh, who the rights holder is, so um, there is some risk. Now, this is actually something, again, that might actually have a small commercial market for Japanese American descendants of the people who were interned, uh, but I think for cultural and historical reasons, it should, is, it should be available uh, to, uh, to our culture. Uh, and so thank you, Rick Prelinger, for, uh, for making it available uh, uh, to us. Uh, but I show both the photograph and the short clip in order to uh, sort of show that the orphan work problem that sometimes you read about is real. Uh, and it's something that authors who want to make cultural heritage available and who want to show resources uh, that will uh, really speak to uh, important uh, points, uh, that copyright can be an obstacle to achieving some of those goals. As authors, I think we want to be able to make orphan works uh, available, and of course, we need to be careful. I'm not saying, oh, let's just say everything's an orphan and uh, you get to use it, so there have got to be safeguards in place. But nevertheless, freeing orphans is one of our agenda items, and I think it's important to, uh, to mention that. So uh, we've uh, articulated a set of four principles. Uh, you can read uh, the document uh, ab uh, about our principles and the proposals. Um, I wanna, we, there's not time actually to go through uh, all, um, uh, all 20 of the proposals, but I wanted to highlight a few. Uh, most of the proposals are actually ones that I think affect and will be beneficial to authors across the board. Uh, a few of the proposals are more specific to the interests of academic authors, uh, but we think actually that orphan works is something that uh, authors of all kinds uh, are actually uh, interested in. Another one of the proposals is to recognize uh, attribution interests of authors of all kinds right now under U.S. law. Only uh, certain visual artists have attribution interests uh, respected by the law, even though there's an international treaty that we're obliged to, uh, uh, to follow that uh, is supposed to have us recognize attribution interests. Um, uh, we have some proposals about making it easier to register claims of copyright and to get copyright information uh, available to Im improve licensing. Uh, we want to uh, simplify termination of transfer uh, rules. So there's a part of US copyright law that allows you to terminate uh, an assignment or an exclusive license. Maybe you want to make a new license uh, agreement with a publisher. Maybe you want to put it in the public domain. Uh, today, um, the, those rules are so complicated that hardly anybody can really understand them. And so simplifying that to allow us to get our rights back is a really good idea. Uh, a, another example is a adoption of a small claims process uh, so that infringements that happen uh, that involve $500 or $1,000 uh, um, uh, infringement claim can be adjudicated because right now in order to uh, for small-scale infringements to, uh, to be vindicated, you have to bring a federal lawsuit, uh, and you'd spend more in the first hour that your lawyer was working than you could be able to get back uh, in compensation, so that really doesn't work for, for authors. And I could go into other details. The, uh, the truth is that we have um, 
uh, many uh, proposals that I think uh, do actually cut across uh, many different sectors uh, and uh, happy to take questions uh, uh, either today or in the future if you want to um, put more questions to us. Uh, I just want to say that uh, we want to be proactive. We want to have a positive agenda. We want to speak as authors uh, who uh, have a right to have our voices heard uh, on many of these policy issues. Uh, and we expect to be developing a series of white papers to kind of flesh out more the ideas in some of the proposals in our copyright reform uh, document today. Uh, but we'll. Uh, plan to participate in public policy events uh, through uh, testimony in Congress if we have a chance to do that, to appear at round tables that the Patent Office or the Copyright Office organize uh, to submit comments uh, and the like. Uh, and uh, it's important to know that while we're focusing on copyright reform now, it's because it's in the air, people are talking about it, um, but there are a number of other policy issues that we think uh, need to be addressed over time. Uh, and importantly, we want to form alliances with other organizations uh, and with uh, people who have different kinds of perspectives. So, um, uh, as some of you know, we got off into a not a very good start with the Authors Guild. Um, uh, they wrote a pretty blazing uh, attack on us, but uh, they didn't know what they were talking about. It was all fiction in that. Um, uh, but I think actually there are common interests that we have uh, with them, and I'd like to be able to work with them on those. Uh, there are a number of organizations. The Internet Archive is one that we hope to partner with. Um, uh, a number of other organizations, Creative Commons, uh, Spark, the Digital Public Library of America, uh, Public Knowledge, and so forth. We think that on different kinds of issues we can really work together. But uh, in addition to the things that Molly was talking about, which is really about helping people manage their rights, uh, that's the inward-facing role of the Authors Alliance. We'll also have an outward-facing role, which is trying to participate in the public policy debates. And we're actually confident that we can build a better future where everybody gets a chance to have their interests uh, well served by it. Uh, so again, thank you very much for uh, being here, and I'd like to invite uh, Jeff Nunberg, Brewster, and Molly to come up, and we'll have a short panel session and then uh, more drinks. <laughs>